on World News Tonight. Election runoff. The tight election in Turkey resulted in a runoff between President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and challenger Kemal Kish Darulo. Fueling rumors. Belarusian president makes a public appearance for the first time in a week, despite rumors of health deterioration. New investigations. Special counsel reporting from the Russia investigation criticized FBI over the 2016 Trump campaign and making a splash. Hearing impaired kids get a chance to learn how to swim in Bolivia. This is Ada Derna World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and you are watching World News. Now tonight we start off in the Balkans where Turkey's future leadership hangs in the balance. Turkey's presidential election is headed to a runoff with President Erdogan already claiming victory. Incumbent two-decade ruler falls just short of a majority but sits in a good position to win the second round of voting on the 28th of May after his alliance retains hold on parliament. Tonight, Turkey's presidential election on a knife edge, and with it, the future of the country's democracy and its relationship with the West. Opponents of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan hope to beat him in a knockout and bring an end to his 20 years in power. But the authoritarian leader defying polls that had him trailing and sounding triumphant in an early morning speech. We do not doubt that the choice of our nation, which gave the majority in the parliament to our alliance, will be in favor of trust and stability in the presidential election. But Erdogan still short of the 50% needed for a first round win, and now faces a runoff in two weeks time against challenger Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, who today urged his disappointed supporters to fight on. I am here and so are you. I swear, I will struggle until the end. I am here. The opposition is not claiming voter fraud, but is accusing state media of unfairly boosting Erdogan, an argument echoed by international observers. The incumbent and the ruling parties enjoyed an unjustified advantage, including through biased media coverage. But turn out a stunning near 90%, even in areas devastated by the earthquake that killed tens of thousands earlier this year democracy amid the destruction. We are in a very desperate situation and it is not clear what will happen. Erdogan was first elected in 2003 as a reformer. But after a failed military coup against him, he's become increasingly authoritarian. Jailing journalists and tightening control of the courts. Relations with NATO also strained under Erdogan, who lashed out at President Biden on the campaign trail and has refused to join Western sanctions against Russia. His challenger promising to repair ties with the West, including by greenlighting Sweden's membership of NATO, which is currently being blocked by Erdogan. An election with much at stake for Turkey and the world. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has promised to provide Ukraine with air defense missiles and long-range attack drones. The pledge follows a two-hour meeting between Sunak and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky won fresh pledges for new long-range drones when he met with British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak on Monday. That's as Ukraine hails its first substantial battlefield advances for six months. The promise of weapons adds to a haul of Western arms for a counteroffensive against Russian invaders. Since last week, the Ukrainian military has started to push Russian forces back in and around the small eastern city of Bakhmut, its first significant offensive operations since its troops recaptured Kherson in the south in November. The battle for Bakhmut has become the longest and bloodiest of the war and has symbolic significance for Russia. Over the past half of a year, Kyiv has held its troops on the defensive while Moscow mounted its campaign, sending hundreds of thousands of fresh reservists and mercenaries into Europe's bloodiest ground combat since World War II. Kyiv is now preparing a counteroffensive using hundreds of new tanks and armoured vehicles sent by Western countries since the start of this year. Their aim is to recapture the sixth of Ukraine's territory that Moscow claims to have annexed. Russia said it did not believe the added British hardware would change the course of the conflict. Zelensky's trip to Britain was the latest stop on a tour that saw him visit Rome, Berlin and Paris, pocketing major weapons pledges along the way. 
Special Counsel John Durham concluded that the FBI should never have launched a full investigation into connections between Donald Trump's campaign and Russia during 2016 election. This was according to a report compiled over three years by the Trump administration appointee. A special counsel appointed under then U.S. President Donald Trump issued a report on Monday concluding that FBI agents lacked actual evidence when they opened a probe into whether members of Trump's 2016 presidential campaign conspired with Russia to win the White House. The release of the 306-page report by special counsel John Durham marks the end of a four-year investigation into potential missteps by the FBI. In the midst of the 2016 campaign, the FBI received a tip that a Trump campaign official had bragged to an Australian diplomat that Russia had offered to help the Republican candidate by releasing damaging information about his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton. That tip blossomed into a full-fledged counterintelligence probe, dubbed Crossfire Hurricane, involving government requests to surveil members of Trump's campaign. That probe was later taken over by special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into alleged collusion between the Trump campaign and Moscow. Trump raged against Mueller, castigating the probe as a witch hunt. It's just a continuation of the same witch hunt. They know it, and behind closed doors, they laugh at it. Uh, it's just a continuation of the same nonsense. After securing indictments or pleas from 34 individuals, Mueller in 2019 concluded that despite an array of contacts between Trump and individuals linked to the Russian government, he lacked sufficient evidence of a criminal conspiracy. That same year, Attorney General William Barr tapped John Durham to investigate the investigators. In lieu of convictions, Durham instead castigated U.S. intelligence and law enforcement, accusing them of treating the 2016 Trump probe differently from other politically sensitive investigations. For instance, he said Clinton and other officials received defensive briefings about being the possible targets of foreign interference whereas Trump received no such briefings before the FBI opened probes into four members of his campaign. Durham added, quote, The department and the FBI failed to uphold their important mission of strict fidelity to the law in connection with certain events and activities described in this report. In response to the report, the FBI said it has already implemented dozens of corrective actions that have been in place for some time. Durham's findings are likely to become political fodder for Trump who is currently running for re-election in 2024, despite facing criminal charges in New York and two federal investigations by special counsel Jack Smith that are looking at both Trump's retention of classified records and his role in efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. Trump said on social media Monday that he was pleased with the results of Durham's report. Belarusian media released new images of President Alexander Lukashenko in what would be his first appearance in nearly a week as speculation over his health grows. Belarusian state media released this video of President Alexander Lukashenko on Monday after speculation about his health intensified over the weekend. The video purports to show the 68-year-old at a military command center in what would be his first public appearance in almost a week. Dressed in a military uniform, Lukashenko is seated in a chair, speaking with officers. He appears to have a bandage on his left hand and is short of breath at times. He had not been pictured in public since he reviewed Russia's annual military parade on Moscow's Red Square on May 9th. He later skipped a lunch hosted by Russian President Vladimir Putin and opted to drive over the traditional post-parade stroll. On Sunday, Lukashenko missed a ceremony in Minsk amid unconfirmed media reports that he had been hospitalized. Lukashenko has ruled Belarus with an iron fist since 1994. If he is incapacitated and unable to rule, his job is passed in a caretaker capacity to the Speaker of the Upper House of Parliament until new elections are held. Lukashenko's office has declined to comment on his absence. Exiled Belarusian opposition leader Svetlana Seknovskaya told her supporters on Monday to be ready to grab any chance to turn her country into a democracy. The U.S. Virgin Islands have subpoenaed Tesla CEO Elon Musk for documents in its lawsuit accusing J.P. Morgan of helping enable sexual abuses by late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. 
Tesla CEO Elon Musk has been subpoenaed by the U.S. Virgin Islands. The American Territory wants Musk to hand over documents relating to the late sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. It's all part of the lawsuit the Virgin Islands has lodged against J.P. Morgan, accusing it of helping enable sexual abuses by Epstein on Little St. James, a private island he owned there. Lawyers allege that America's biggest bank ignored internal warnings about Epstein for several years before eventually dropping him as a client in 2013. The bank has denied knowledge of Epstein's crimes. According to the Monday court filing, Musk may have been referred to J.P. Morgan by Epstein. He did not seek to question Musk under oath or implicate him in any wrongdoing. However, the subpoena demanded any documents he has about Epstein's involvement in human trafficking. It also sought any communications between the entrepreneur and J.P. Morgan about Epstein, as well as between Musk and Epstein. The subpoena was issued on April the 28th and only came to light on Monday, when the Virgin Islands asked to serve Musk by alternative means, because it had been unable to locate and serve him. In a tweet late on Monday, Musk said that the notion that he would listen to financial advice from Epstein was absurd. Referring to Epstein, he said, That cretin never advised me on anything whatsoever. We are going into a short commercial break now. We'll be back soon with more world news. Welcome back. Now a month after Sudan's conflict erupted, hundreds of people are stuck in Port Sudan, battling extreme heat and dwindling supplies of food and water. It's been a month since Sudan's sudden eruption into violence. Hundreds of thousands have been displaced by bombings and gunfire, mainly from the capital Khartoum. But for many still stranded in the coastal city Port Sudan, they're now facing extreme heat and a lack of water and shelter. Among them on Sunday was Reem. We came from war and we're staying here in this heat. This is not healthy for these children. We're unable to do anything and none of the entities are helping. Please help us. Humanitarian organizations, please help us. Not for us, but for the sake of these children. We have pregnant and sick elderly women. We have people whose health could get worse. Stranded families have been sleeping inside tents they've built from blankets, or huddling in shaded areas as they try to escape the intense sunlight. Meanwhile, the violence they fled continues back in Khartoum. <laughs> Intense clashes have continued in the capital and its sister cities, Bari and Omdurman, despite Saudi and US brokered talks between the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces. On Monday, the Sudanese army was carrying out airstrikes in Khartoum's north, targeting paramilitary forces around a hospital. Footage released by the Rapid Support Forces appeared to show extensive damage at the hospital. The location could be independently verified, but not the date. Most hospitals in the capital have already been put out of service. The bloodshed has killed at least 676 people and injured 5,576, according to official figures, though the real toll is expected to be much higher. Indigenous people in northern Argentina's vast Checo forest says that the local trees protect a natural rhythm to everyday life that could be disrupted if land clearing and farm exports ramp up from an immense global trade deal. Northern Argentina's vast Chaco forests are under pressure. Trees are being cleared to make way for large-scale soy and cattle farms that can meet global demand. The changes are taking place as a global trade deal hangs in the balance. Some local residents say it could bring new jobs to the remote corner of South America. But local indigenous people warn their very way of life is at stake. Nule lives in the Gran Chaco near the sleepy city of Las Lomitas. Her family is indigenous Pilaga. The local leader says trees set a natural rhythm of life here, providing food, water, shade, as well as supporting the ecosystem. Land clearing disrupts that. We, the Pilaga, are very affected by land clearing because clearing leads to drought, to tornadoes. 
The trees themselves play an important role in the environment. The Gran Chaco, a carbon sink often overshadowed by the Amazon rainforest to the north, is the continent's second largest woodland. It's twice the size of California. But government data shows an area almost 90 times the size of New York City has been demolished in Argentina's native forest between 1998 and 2021. That's happened almost entirely in the Gran Chaco. An impending trade deal between South America's Mercosur bloc and the European Union could ramp up exports and land clearing, although the EU is likely to tack on tough rules to limit deforestation. Some locals say the deal could help create jobs in a region where half the population lives in poverty. Argentina enacted a forest law in 2007, and many countries have import rules aimed at deterring illegal deforestation. Local farmers say they're already seeing environmental changes on their doorstep. Higher temperatures. And gusty wind that blows in from the north. As for Nule, she says for people like her, trade deals and distant regulations mean very little. The truth is, as an indigenous person, we listen to international treaties, agreements, but those agreements are for the economic and business world. For the world in which the Argentine economy operates. For us as an indigenous community, the reality is that we are not part of these agreements. Those countries and the European Union don't know the indigenous peoples because we were never in the negotiations. They never took us into account. South Korea is facing early summer weather with temperatures expected to exceed 30 degrees Celsius. This as other parts of the globe are also seeing unusual warm weather with the global average temperatures possibly hitting record highs this year. This Tuesday, people in Seoul woke up to temperatures of 17 degrees Celsius and the daytime high is forecast to reach 30 degrees Celsius. The highs today are normally seen in the midsummer months of July and are 7 degrees higher than the average for this time of the year. Daegu could see even higher weather today with highs of 33 degrees in the forecast. According to the Korea Meteorological Administration, warm winds from the southwest will cause this heat to continue into Thursday in areas like the east coast of Gangwon-do province and inland areas of Gyeongsang-do provinces. Such unreasonably warm temperatures and near-record heat are being seen around the world. U.S. weather experts have warned that the chance of the El Nino phenomenon developing this summer is now over 90 percent. El Nino is where waters in the Pacific Ocean become much warmer than usual, causing searing heat waves and stronger storms. Global average temperatures could soar to record highs this year as a result. The high temperatures in South Korea are short of an official heat wave warning as humidity levels are under 40 percent, making it easier for the body to keep itself cool. But with high winds expected in the mountains of northern Gangwon-do province this afternoon, the weather agency says there's a greater risk of forest fires. We have some good news for you. Arthritis is the most common type of degenerative arthritis that occurs with age but lacks a fundamental treatment. A South Korean bio company is developing a type of cell therapy for the disease that simply requires a needle. Osteoarthritis, or OA, is a type of degenerative condition that develops as the cartilage deteriorates with age. One in three people over the age of 60 suffer from OA, but there is no fundamental cure. A South Korean bio company has developed a type of OA treatment by differentiating cartilage cells from a healthy person's blood cells. First, blood cells are made into what's called induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPS cells. IPS cells are cells that have been reprogrammed and have regained the capacity to differentiate into any type of cell in the body and can also become specialized cells such as stem cells. These IPS cells are made into cartilage cells. When cartilage cells are injected in the form of single cells, they disappear within a week but do not disappear when made into the form of a cell mass. The cartilage itself is in three-dimensional form and is in a state that mimics a living body. In fact, when the same number of cartilage cells were differentiated into 2D and 3D cells, the 3D form showed better performance. This is the first time a cartilage cell treatment has been made with IPS cells. The newly developed treatment can be directly injected into the knee area. 
The research team confirmed that during experiments on animals, more than 30 percent of cartilage tissue was regenerated. The injected cartilage cells regenerate the surrounding tissue and damaged areas. First, it produces a lot of active biosynthetic substances. By stimulating the surrounding tissue, cartilage regeneration occurs indirectly. It also touches directly to the defect and becomes directly involved in regeneration. Based on animal experiments, the research team plans to conduct human clinical trials early next year. The last resort for OA treatment is currently titanium artificial joint surgery. Commercializing a simple injection type of OA treatment would make treatment and recovery much more likely and accessible. Welcome back to World News and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Myanmar's junta leader Ming Hang Lang visited the cyclone hit Sichuan township in Rikin state to assess the damage and deliver donations to its residents. A former associate of Rudy Giuliani is suing him for a sexual assault and other wrongdoing, accusing him of hiring her to fulfill his desire for a sexual relationship. German energy firm Cefe and Uniper awarded some traders millions of dollars in bonuses for 2022, just months after the companies were rescued with multi-billion dollar bailouts as Russia halted gas supplies. A fire at a hostel in New Zealand killed at least six people today and officials say that they believe the toll could rise with 11 people still missing. Venezuelans are battling fast-rising utility bills as subsidies from the cash-strapped government dwindle, leaving many paying large chunks of their salaries for electricity and water despite regular outages. And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. And in case you missed to watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always re-watch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Now, the first time in the water for any child can be daunting. For a hearing-impaired child learning how to swim, the challenge can be even more turbulent. We leave you tonight with the young children making that step to learn swimming in Bolivia. Stay safe and have a good night.